No matter what, no matter what, it is always exciting kickoff weekend of the NFL season because you've been waiting months for football to come back into your lives and no matter what you project or think about your team's chances in the upcoming season, now it's when the rubber re meets the road, it's brass tax time, you're actually playing some meaningful football. Now what's important to remember is that no matter the results of your team's week one performance, win, lose, or tie, it is important to not get too low or too high on what you saw. Keep a level head. Now, I must say, looking at today's matchup featuring the 49ers and the Bears at freaking sloppy, wet-ass Soldier Field, perfect illustration of why the Bears need a stadium in Harlington Heights with a damn dome! Who the hell wants to go in person and watch football for three hours in that frickin' quagmire? Who wants to sit there and watch that on TV? No, that's not cool. That's bare weather. <laughs> no, it's not the fucking 80s anymore. Get the hell over it. Let's get a damn stadium with a dome. The sooner the better. What a joke. It was a tale of two halves, though, today, because you'd forgive me if, while watching the first half, I wasn't a tad bit ready to pounce on this team. I wasn't a tad bit negative because they certainly deserved it because that first half was peak Bears football. I even tweeted at halftime. I said, asked my followers, how would you describe this first half in five words or less? So I would say, Bears football, I missed you. Or Matt Nagy could do better. It was that bad. That chicken shit play calling on offense was absolutely atrocious in that first half. I understand you think, hey, it's raining, like, yeah, the conditions could be less than ideal. Um, but it wasn't raining that bad during most of the game. You have to throw the ball. The whole notion of you have to establish the run, as Sud Gilman said, that's bullshit. You have to establish the pass. Because when you establish the run, what do you do? You still haven't established whether or not you can throw. When you establish the pass, what do you establish? Is that you might be able to win the game without having to run the ball. And it doesn't matter. And that's the key to Justin Fields' development, which is still the utmost priority this year. Miss me with all the other dumb crap. And the continual wanting to run the ball and just... Lack of imagination, lack of creativity in the running game with David Montgomery. It's a dive. It's a dive. He had one series, three straight runs. Like, do you even want to do this? At this point in time, you might as well just freaking forfeit if you're going to do that. I think that was early in the second half, but you still get the point. Like an incredibly cautious, incredibly conservative, incredibly stupid game plan. Offensively. All capped off, mind you. All capped off, mind you. By at the end of the first half, the Bears finally get into field goal position because they open it up just a little bit offensively. Gee, imagine that. And then Trenton Gill, the rookie punter, gets called for a personal foul for using his towel to wipe off the spot that he was going to have to place the ball for Santos' field goal attempt. <laughs> and it bumped out of field goal range. Well, looking at El Santos kicked in the second half on a couple of extra points, that's probably a good thing. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. That was peak. Bears football in the first half. No points scored, having to rely on the defense to come up with stops, the defense to get big sacks to end drives, the defense like Jalen Johnson with the great peanut punch early that Brisker had great awareness to recover. You know, the reality is, is the 49ers should have had a massive lead. This should have been a 17 to nothing or 21 to nothing game at the half, realistically. And that was a theme for the day is that the 49ers allowed the Bears to keep hanging around. And you let a team like that hang around, they might just fuck around and win the damn game. And that's what happened. Because the 49ers couldn't stop shooting themselves in the damn foot. Untimely penalties. At least I could say here, like very early in the game, like that first drive you had a bet, you know, run, incompletion, sack. And then it was a little bit later... You had Justin Fields get sliding out of bounds and getting hit. While it wasn't the most egregious one, you know, that was when I wanted the offensive lineman in the team, somebody to come from the sideline, somebody, throw some blows. You've got to let them know that this is not going to be acceptable. 
You have to stand behind your leader, Justin Fields. He's your quarterback. He's one of your team captains that apparently you voted for. Fucking act like it. It was good a little bit later on when there was a separate um, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, late hit on Justin Fields towards his head. Like, the offense went after the 49ers defense. Good. Keep that up. You have to set a tone. You have to send a message. Christ. But the second half, like I said, it was a tale of two halves. It was that first half. It looked like naggy football. Actually, it looked like low-end naggy football. And literally, you can point to Matt Nagy could do better because last year against the 49ers, at least his team put up 22 points, for Christ's sakes. But the second half was different. And it's amazing all of a sudden when you try to actually throw the damn ball and exploit the weakness of the 49ers defense, which sure as hell is not their front seven. It is their coverage in the secondary. Big things can happen. And what I really look at here was some of the improvisation ability of Justin Fields. Like you look at that first touchdown to Dante Pettis. Like it was a total breakdown in discipline and defense by the 49ers. I understand like Fields is rotating to that side, but dude, you're 30 frickin' yards away from the play. You cannot lose sight of the receiver that you were originally covering. Fields is able to make an athletic play and roll out, have the awareness to sit there and find Dante Pettis backside, throws it to him, easy touchdown. Imagine that. Throw the damn ball! Then you look a little bit later. Equidemia St. Brown touchdown. Throw the damn ball. And even when you talk about, well, you run the risk of some mistakes with Justin Fields. Good. Good. This is the type of team to do that against because their offense isn't great either. Let him learn. That will pay off later on down the road. Don't hide your quarterback. Because fucking around and trying to hide your quarterback in the first half is what had the Bears down 7 to nothing and looking like absolute horse shit. Because even when you look at, you know, right before that Pettis touchdown, Fields had a really bad throw to the sidelines, if you remember, to Equinemia St. Brown. That should have been intercepted, but it wasn't. And what happened soon after that? Rolls out, backside, Dante Pettis touchdown. Then later on in the game, Equinemia St. Brown touchdown. Then they get Eddie Jackson makes a play. Could you imagine he could still do that? Interception, return it. Khalil Herbert. See how the throwing of the ball, the passing game, and doing some of that loosens up the defense a little bit. It might help you run a little bit. If anything, Khalil Herbert on that third touchdown drive was making a case for uh, running back one, if you ask me. But damn it. Like, this feels good. The Bears won this game. I guess the team that went to the NFC Championship game last year. And you might say, well, they don't have Jimmy Garoppolo starting. They have Trey Lance. And to which I say, how much different is it really? And especially in these conditions today, it wasn't really that much different. But even with all of that said, you know, while it was good to see the defense come up with a couple of key force turnovers and make some big plays, let's not get it totally twisted here. While it's cool that this Bears team got a win number one on the season week one, and Iberflus gets his first win as an NFL head coach, there are concerns and things to work on with this team. There's no question about that. I will say that Nick Bosa got some pressure throughout the day, but it wasn't like he lived in Justin Fields' face all day. So Braxton Jones at least held up somewhat. Their offensive line held up somewhat. Fields got sacked twice. He had some other pressure. So it wasn't a great day, but it wasn't a terrible day. They were probably worse in their run blocking because they really weren't able to do much there in the first half, that's for sure. Um, that's got to get better. Uh, but I look at the 49ers and Debo Samuel. He had 10 touches in the game. Now, granted, a number of them came as a runner, but look at what they're doing. They've got a marquee weapon, and they're manufacturing touches for him. Frickin' Luke Getzey's dumbass in this one only finds a way to get three targets for Darnell Mooney, and I say, well, yeah, this or Justin Fields has got to target him. But the point I'm getting at here is that should never happen. You should be manufacturing touches. As many goddamn screens as you threw, you couldn't have thrown a couple to Mooney in this one? Like, if I wanted to come away impressed, I would say, well, the defense forced some turnovers, although I think they're a little vulnerable, so let's not break out the anointing oil just yet. And that's one of the flaws sometimes with the cover two defenses is if they're not forcing turnovers, they can be had. But they made some big plays today. There's no question about it. It was great to see 
uh, Dominique Robinson, your fifth round pick, get in on a couple of sacks. Like, that's really encouraging. Roquan Smith had a great day. I thought Brisker had a good day. Kyler Gordon had a rough one, but that's going to happen. But you look at them defensively, they can get better. Certainly things they can work on. But offensively, like, the play calling's got to be better. You're going to win games with Justin Fields or lose them. But if you try to hide him, you will lose games. Or you're just back to doing Bears football. Nobody wants to see that shit anymore. Looking at the 4,000 yards or bus tracker for Justin Fields. He's got 3,879 to go, which means he threw for a whopping 121 yards today. 121 yards, two touchdowns, and a pick. Imagine if you would have let him throw it 30 times. You might have blown out the 49ers in the frickin' second half. Don't play it so damn close to the vest. If you want the Bears to win this year, which to me is still a secondary priority, but it can happen, that's not going to come by playing it close to the vest and playing Bears football. It's going to come by hitting big plays in the goddamn passing game. And you saw that today. So take all of your run the ball and protect the quarterback, game manage takes, and blow them out your ass. What did stand out to me that was good from a coaching standpoint was the amount of discipline that this team showed. I think they only had three or four penalties today. Meanwhile, the 49ers just beat themselves all throughout. You know, defensive penalties all over the place. Like, not a great showing for them. So if you were thinking that the 49ers were a contender, after today's game, you should be really reevaluating that. I know, again, it's week one. They were on the road. Blah, 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 blah. But that is something that should be a concern because they shot themselves in the foot. This was a game that should have been won by them in uncomfortable fashion, and they lost it. And that's what bad teams do. Meanwhile, the Chicago Bears won a game that they were absolutely at one point dead to rights with. It was 10 to nothing at one point, and keep it honest, cut out the bullshit. It felt insurmountable. A 10-point deficit felt insurmountable. And then you open it up even just a little bit on offense, and it's amazing, it's amazing what freaking happens. Throw the goddamn ball! And good things can happen. Like to the whole argument of, well, you got to protect Justin Fields and develop him slowly. How much development did Justin Fields get in the first half with all the crazy-ass conservative runs that they did? Exactly. Unbelievable. I like that they adjusted in the second half, so that is a positive. And the Bears ultimately won a game that they should have lost. And that is something that you can point to. You do it enough, that could be the sign of a good team. Because good teams win games they should lose. Bad teams lose games they should win. Uh, maybe Eberflus, I would question a little bit after Cairo Santos had already missed one extra point. Why would you sit there and not try to go for two to make it an 11-point game? Like That felt a little questionable to me, uh, but whatever. Um, the defense showed some speed. They showed a desire to get after it, try to force turnovers. It does feel good at the end of the day for the Bears to win this game. They're 1-0. and We'll take it. But don't get too cocky, Bears fans, going into this upcoming week against Green Bay. Let's not break out the anointing oil yet. Let's not overreact too much. And let's understand that they need to be much more aggressive offensively, especially throwing the ball early against Green Bay. Because if they don't, they're going to get their shit rocked. Period. They're going to look bad. They're going to look terrible. You got to take the fight to them. You got to put the ball in Justin Fields' hands. No more 120-yard passing days. That's stupid. It's crazy to me that you won a game with 120 yards, one yards passing from your quarterback. That is, again, peak Bears football. And what's really sad is, and it speaks to maybe the larger like structure of the plays and the play calling and the play design, is it felt like some of the biggest plays of the day for the Bears came when Justin Fields had to improvise. So maybe you should match your play calling to that and put him in more like improv type of situations. Because that's when some of the good things happen. The more structured pocket passing shit didn't work today. But God dang it, a win is a win, and it feel good, feels good to start off the year that way. But again, the most important thing this year is Justin Fields, 4,000 yards or bust, and he's got 3,879 damn to go.